people in uh, poorer communities or African Americans who aren't perhaps lawyers or doctors who are professionals. So it kind of works both ways. But where are you from? I'm from a housing project in North St. Louis. And people don't believe that. They assume I went to Harvard, you're a successful lawyer, you must have really educated parents and you must have come from a really, you know, well-to-do family. Far from the truth. I grew up in a home without a father, mother, in a housing project. None of the quote-unquote stereotypes. And it's interesting though what you're saying about the differences within the race. Uh, the producer on this show uh, is Astra. Are you over there, Astra? Yep. Here, right. bye. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. <laughs> You've experienced the flip side of, of what yeah. Marie was talking about, right? Exactly. Um, I come from the suburbs, Long Island, New York, and um, it's whenever people see me, for the most part, they assume I'm ghetto. And they never will say, you're ghetto, of course. They'll be like, you know, I'm with my multiracial friends. They'll tell different races, hi, hi, hi. And when they get to me, they're like, oh, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> like, all this stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you acting this way? You know, just say hello. So I experienced it. I think it's because, you know, I'm dark. I mean, I, I don't know why else. See, people yeah, think I grew up where Astra grew up. They think yeah. my parents are your parents. Exactly. They just my say, parents what's up are college to me? educated. See, I can say to what's up to them. Home. Exactly. <laughs> Well, you did that. What's up? Pretty good. That's the first time. In you know, all these practice. years, I've never heard you say that. You know, that is the finest ghetto girl I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you. All right. We got to take a break. What, pre what preconceived beliefs do you have about Hispanic people? We're going to break some more myths when we come back. Look. What I'm trying to say in this group of videos is simple. It's only a problem when we allow it to be a problem. When the differences between people become a problem, it is a problem that we dwell on our differences and not the fact that we're more alike than different. Like I said in the last video, I don't watch Dr. Phil. I don't advocate the use of Dr. Phil. But for people to finally have to deal with race through watching Dr. Phil and not knowing your own feelings, it's pitiful. When Dr. Phil comes back on, I'm going to let it go. And let's finish up this last segment. The segment to our call Race Where. So you think about it. Because now he's going to speak about Hispanic people and the pre preconceived notions of what a Hispanic person may be. Hispanic stereotypes. They wasn't correct with the white stereotypes. Seems like they held back. They didn't tell the good ones. Hey, Dr. Phil, my name is Jules Sanchez with the last name Sanchez. I used to get chased down the street uh, by the Latino kids saying, you're not a real Mexican, you don't speak Spanish. And I was like, I couldn't even like be accepted by my own, like my own people. I live in a city where um, when I moved here, it was pretty much a mix of everybody, and now there's more of an Asian population. And I dread going to the grocery store. When I'm in the grocery store and somebody walks into me so hard that literally sometimes I'll get a bruise on my shoulder, or they push me aside because they want to get their candy bar and they don't say excuse me, I look at them and sometimes, you know, I'm trying to say that it's a hidden bias, but sometimes I actually, well, I'll actually say, excuse me, that's the word that we use in America. I mean, come on. Now, Vicki is here, and she believes that our children have to learn Spanish in school because of all the Hispanics, that there are so many ethnic crimes by Asians and Latino groups, and that Asian people steal dogs from people and eat them. Now, are you, are, are you, now wait a minute, are you punking me or are you serious? I witnessed an Asian family take out these two very, very large carcasses that were wrapped in tarps out of the car, took two people to carry them into the house, 
two two carcasses and then like family after family after family of Asians were going over that house like for their feast. And I do know for a fact that my brother was served We, we call that a barbecue. I, <laughs> Uh, uh, something, very, something very important about stereotypes and the, and the permanence of, of, of stereotypes. How many times have we seen Asian families going to eat hamburgers? How many times have we seen a Asian families going to eat pizza? But that's the kind of evidence that we don't allow, right? That indeed, we have the category that Asians do X, Y, and Z. And if they don't do X, Y, and Z, then they must be something else. That means we have to cognitively remove them from the category and say, well, I don't really, that person's not really Asian. And look at it. it's like I want to start with the first comment which was in America we say excuse me this speaks to the whole Asians are foreigners in their own country and let me say something that because this is what's out there in the media it happens to our parents too my mom bought me a blonde wig and blue eye contact lenses for my first day of high school so I would do better so I am not claiming that this is all from the outside it starts to reverse itself and come on the inside but like dog wolf one of Siegfried and Roy's tigers, it doesn't matter, because the point is that <laughs> you can't be like, therefore, Asian people eat dogs. That's like me saying, white people are all serial killers. White people all have hoods. Like, that's not how you, you how you learn about a people. You know, I don't know what your situation is. I don't really want to know particularly, mm -hmm. but I mean, this is the, the thing about Asian Americans, I have to say this because it's so important, that hidden bias is the hallmark of racism against Asian Americans. That's it. Like, question. you've defined it, hidden bias because there isn't you know the same levels of violence there isn't the same sort of debate out in the media and Asian American kids across the country that I visit on college tour every year are committing suicide taking drugs going into depression because they are simply not acknowledged as human beings in a country that they so badly want to participate in and do with their dollars and that's one of the huge myths and we'll discover that myth that that all Asians are foreign born or Chinese uh, now, actor-comedian Kate Rigg has agreed to read the top ten stereotypes of Asian Americans. So, give me the list. All right, here we go. Number one, smart, good at math, overachievers. Two, play an instrument, probably violin. Three, <laughs> polite, passive, and quiet, obviously not true. Four, bad drivers. Five, antisocial. Six, males have small penises, not true. Seven, <laughs> Asian women are exotic, only when we want to be. Eight, strict families. Nine, do not speak English properly. Pro do not speak English properly. <laughs> nice kick. Do not speak English properly and are all foreign born. Ten, eat cats and dogs. Okay, now, cats too? Chinese oh, yeah. cats, Filipinos, yeah. oh, dogs, Chinese I think cats, is how it Filipinos. goes. I think all right, we talked good. about that myth. Mm -hmm. Do you think you are, have a bias or a prejudice? I definitely have a bias. I definitely have a bias. Okay, and and you were saying in America, in America we say yeah. excuse me. No, like he said, the thing about when he people move over off the sidewalk when he is around. Okay, I do that when I'm walking every morning a three mile walk. When I see an Asian com person coming at me, because they won't move and they r literally will run into you. And if you don't say excuse me to them, they'll give you a dirty look. And that's how it is every morning when so I go for a walk. That's bad manners. And that's no, nothing I think to do with nationality manners. or ethnicity right. or race. That's bad manners. It's bad manners. And if you feel like that, you know, that's it. you can stick to that. Then maybe if things that they're doing are upsetting you, then the way to do it is to get with them and talk to them like human beings. Say, hey, I know you're new in this exactly. country. Don't bump into me. Or not even about that. Just, hey, don't bump into me. It doesn't have to be about race. You see the producer stand over here. Y'all worked with producers here. This is one of the producers that is on this show. How did you like the producers here, by the way? I absolutely adored Amy. It's a, Amy. So you adored Amy? Did you like Amy? Oh yeah, she's great. I love okay. Jessica. We've, I've never met her in person. I've only talked to her on the phone. Yeah. Well, this is one of the producers that's on the team. This is Tammy. Oh. <laughs> Let's bring Amy out. That you Yay! absolutely love. Oh, More than ever. So what did you ask? Amy, what did you ask? I asked her if she still likes me now. What did I say? Yeah. I still love you. I love you more than ever. So is there a nicer person on the world than that? Oh, I mean, yeah. have you ever met anybody that was more accommodating to you? Oh, she was great. And, and Tammy was too. Uh, uh, but you Not just, 